Hi friends, Dean here with Mad Max RT. Today I want to just do a simple video showing how I wash cars and detail cars. It's not everyone's forte, not everyone has to be fanatical about how they do it. Um, I, I'm a big believer in not taking my car to the car wash. I took my truck once in nine years, a couple of years ago, I was visiting LA for Christmas and my mother-in-law's house was jammed with cars and there was no way I could wash it there. So I reluctantly took it down to a car wash for 25 bucks and supposedly it was one of the more high-end ones in a better part of Orange County. And I, I almost had a heart attack. I mean, they're dropping rags and they pick the rag up and they want to go back and, and continue wiping down my truck. I'd have to stop them. Well, oh, please, use a fresh rag. I thought I was going to have a coronary. So, I, you know, sometimes you don't have a choice. If you live in an apartment, you have to go to one of those... Um, your uh, do-it-yourself, you know, car stalls with get the wand and all that. And you can use a lot of these same techniques there. If you can't do it in your own front driveway or yard, or if your apartment complex doesn't have a designated spot, you can do all of this stuff at a car wash. Sometimes I'll even bring a bucket with water, get a big bucket, so, um, so you can fill it part way up. I'll put saran wrap over the top, put it inside the car, so it, in case it splashes, it doesn't, you know, get um, your carpet in the trunk or what have you. It works out pretty well, but these are my techniques. I've been doing this for years. I did it professionally in the early 90s for Gulftran Engineering. They had a lot of high-end Corvettes and cars that they would modify and work on, and race cars and what have you. And that was my job, was to wash, clean them, fuel them up. And uh, I was a driver as well, right? I'd have to take the cars to the customers, take them to the speedometer shops, and custom tranny places. and. So I did a lot of driving, but they saw how good I was at detailing because I'd bring my own cars in there, and they said, God, Dean, your cars look immaculate. So I got a full-time job for a while just detailing high-end cars, and I absolutely loved it. It was a real learning experience. I got to work with some guys who were really good at it, too. So these are my basic tips. There's really, I wouldn't say there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's certainly wrong things that you can do, and you want to stay away from that. But I'm going to show you what works for me. So, and I'm not loyal to any particular product line. You can pretty much substitute a lot of these different products and tools that I have here. So I hope you enjoy it. This is, again, my perspective, and I thought it would help people. I've had so many friends. I've got a good buddy of mine that just bought a new car, and he was asking me, Dean, you know, if you should make a video on washing cars. I don't want to ruin my new car. <clears throat> so this is for all of you, uh, whether you've been doing it a long time or not. It's, it's an old man's perspective on <laughs> car washing. And detailing. I hope you enjoy it. So first off, here's a lot of my products. Uh, I use these, you know, I get these at Costco, these microfiber towels. I get tons of them. Uh, I, I actually will recycle them and reuse them. You got to be careful putting them in the washing machine. Uh, you don't want to put them in, a, in, a, uh, in the dryer on a really hot setting because you can ruin the little microfibers. You could put them in kind of a light, fluffy, tumble dry to where they're not they're still a little damp, but they aren't burning out because you can actually melt the little microfibers. But I love these things. I have a microfiber mitt, wash mitt that I use as well. And I want have my wife wash this stuff each week. She washes all of it in a separate load. And then these are my drying towels, which are large microfiber towels. I basically use two of them. I have a third one in case I need it. So <clears throat> these are what I you know use for my deals. I have um I use this uh, Meguiar's products are basically my favorites. I've used them all over the years, and uh, it's one of the best products you can buy right off the shelf. This is an excellent car wash. Now, I use separate buckets. I got three buckets. I have one that I keep my hot soapy water in. I have another bucket that's my rinse bucket. Now, this is a lot of paint on the outside, but it's clean inside. And then I have a smaller bucket that I use for doing my wheels. So, and I use this car wash soap for all of them. I also use uh, other products. I've got a um, quick detailer I'll, I'll use when I'm done with a car. If I've really worked a spot down in the rocker panels and there's a chance that I've removed some of the wax by cleaning you know, some road grime and tar and bugs off, then I'll just lightly mist this over it and it kind of keeps that wax up on the car. I like using an old-fashioned carnauba wax. I'm kind of old-fashioned that way. This is one of my favorites. But I, you, know, you can mix and match. I like this 3M scratch remover. If you get really stubborn areas and scratches, it works amazing. It's an excellent product. And if you get really stubborn stuff, you can use this 3M rubbing compound as well. So you have kind of something for everything. I use these little applicator pads. Work great for doing your waxing. Um, on my black plastics, I love this Mother's Back to Black. I've been using this for years on my mirrors, on my Hemi truck, or my plastic door handles, or my 
black plastic air dam and I just recently just this morning actually bought this restorer which works uh, pretty good as well <clears throat> for interiors I've got kind of this uh, Meguiar's carpet upholstery cleaner I use this m uh, mostly for carpets for the, for the most part and then I use the, the uh, Meguiar's interior quick detailer <clears throat> for cleaning with a damp microfiber towel this works wonders I love this product it's excellent on interiors I'll use simple green for like stubborn areas in the rocker panels grease on the rim sometimes you get road grime and grease simple green works really good uh, it doesn't strip anything off and they just rinse it off afterwards um, Windex sometimes I'll use Windex or I'll use this stoners invisible glass cleaner which I really like it's good at not leaving streaks and uh, I still use the old-fashioned armor all sometimes I'll change and use different products for, uh, for tire dressing but I'm, I use it very modestly I don't like my tires looking too uh, shiny looking so I, I buff most of it off but it works good so these are pretty much the products that I use uh, you don't have to use these certainly uh, this is my coffee cup here which is keeps my coffee hot for hours five hours later my coffee's still hot it's um, made by thermos wonderful things you, get, you have to have coffee this is a wheel cleaning brush I just bought this this morning my other one was getting pretty gnarly for cleaning wheel wells and the inside of your rims if you want to do that I have a little tire foam applicator for applying you know armor all or what have you works good and I would recommend getting one of these for doing your interior it's a nice little this particular one has a little bristle brush for getting AC vents clean it's great for getting little tiny areas that you can't kind of get your fingers in a rag in there and I like this little deal here, this little soft, clean thing for dusting, getting in little areas uh, around the steering wheel column and stuff like that that you can't quite get your fingers on. This works great. So <clears throat> these are just, again, some of the products that I use. This is my garage here. Um, it's my wife's little area here. She's a Betty Boop fanatic, so I've got all these Betty Boop things. I actually made her this little cutout here. There is my uh, <clears throat> Big Horn Edition. Dodge Ram <laughs> emblem that came off my truck I took off a long time ago. The first thing I did when I bought this house is I had this utility sink installed. One of the best things, that if, you, if you have a garage, for the love of God, get one of these sinks with hot water. It's great for filling up your buckets. I like to use nice hot water when I'm washing my car too. Not everyone, You don't have to, but I like it. It just seems to clean the dirt off a little bit better. You can see I got my airless uh, spray gun. I've been cleaning out some of the little parts for it here, but this sink works wonders. I use it for cleaning out my brushes, rollers, and especially for car wash stuff. And then of course you got to have a stereo. Uh, it's hard to get CD players anymore, so I bought this Sony Explode CD player. Please, cassettes, CDs, an awesome radio. This thing cranks. I recently had my garage all redone. I got a little fridge out here which I keep my IPAs and. Uh, sodas in. Wonderful. I got my shop back. I have uh, these little plastic bins where I keep all my microfiber towels. I got my little um, compressed air hose which I can blow off cracks if I want to. So <clears throat> I keep all my stuff out here. This is a great garage. One of these days I'll do kind of a tour of it and uh, show more of it. But it's wonderful to have a nice space and I've got good lighting up here too. I've got uh, fluorescent lighting everywhere as well as um, little spotlights which light up my car art. I do these cutout car paintings, they're five feet big, kind of contour cutout, they float like an inch off the wall. So it's a great, this is kind of a showcase, I'm going to be doing a big mural here on this wall in front of my truck at some point, but uh, it's a great garage, I'll show more of it another time. Um, but I'm, I want to show how I, you know, uh, pretty much clean the car. There definitely is a syntax in how to do it, and you'd be surprised. Um, Having a nice shop back also helps, uh, which I really like having. It's really good to have a nice shop back. So I hope you enjoy this, guys. This is just my uh, little uh, private Idaho, and my, it's like a, it's it's a sanctuary. On the weekends, there's nothing more I look forward to than cleaning my truck or my car. My truck I don't do as much as I used to. I clean it probably about. In fact, it's filthy now. I drove it to Tahoe, and it's got bugs and road grime all over it. But um, <clears throat> I'd say um, I do my truck probably every other week to once a month at the most, especially because of the heavy rains we've got here lately. But um, I love uh, washing cars. My car I do consistently every single week. I love to wash this thing. 
and uh, this is one, and it's at real dirty right now because we've had a lot of rain. So I'm going to show you exactly how I wash the thing right now. Um, one thing I would suggest is you want to do this early in the morning here in California. It gets really hot. It's 105 to 107 quite often, and uh, in the summertime. And so I usually do it like 7, 7:30, 8 at the very latest in the morning. Luckily, our garage is kind of hidden by the sun right here this is kind of late morning for me but because it's only in the 40s or 50s right now temperature wise I can work quickly as to not get water spots I can't emphasize enough you do not want to wash your car late in the day in the middle of the Sun with no shade and get water spots so an early morning wash or even a late afternoon or like early evening right before the Sun goes down is ideal yeah the car is filthy we got this dirt water spots all over it it doesn't show it too much right now. Um, yeah, you can see there's all kinds of water spots and grime everywhere in this thing. In the shade, it looks pretty good. This color is relatively forgiving, but you definitely want to do um, take your time and do it uh, again early in the morning or late in the afternoon. It makes all the difference in the world. So, uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to get on to the next section here on how to get these buckets and everything filled up and exactly the syntax and which you do it. Now the first thing you want to do is, even though I washed these out when I was done using them last, is you want to rinse them out one more time. So I'll take a hose and put it on like the jet setting here and I'll spray out the bottom. These little chunks in there. Little pieces of dirt. Little chunks of debris. buckets but they work great and the first thing I do is I take uh, my little uh, bucket here and I fill it up with nice hot water um, and put one uh, full one of these in each one with real hot water and then I add cold water with a hose to it just because it seems like it cuts the dirt a little bit better while my buckets filling up with hot water I put a little bit of cleaner in each uh, or actually I only want cleaner in this one and in my wheel bucket so put a little bit in that. I'll use my hose and blow off the residual uh, soap on it. Get it get over my shelves. And then I'll take this and spray this in there to agitate it. Just to kind of get that soap agitated. Now I pour the hot water in my soap bucket. That's pretty much all the water I'm going to need. I'll probably add a little bit more cold water to that. Now I take this, put a little bit of this, not as much, in this bucket just for my wheels. That's enough. Spray off my, my soap. Spray a little bit in there to kind of get it agitated and then I'm going to fill this with hot water next. So now I've got my hot water uh, in my wheel bucket. This is just for my wheels, so I have one rag I'll use just for cleaning my rims. Kind of let it in there and let it soak. And then I have a, my wash mitt for just doing the body and paint on the car. And I put that in there too and kind of let it get down in there. Now I'll add a little bit of cold water to each. see the nice steam coming off that it's, and it's it's nice washing it when it's warm this bucket I'll fill up with just cold water it's just a rinse bucket now I take the, my nozzle and I put it on shower now you may be wondering why you're doing just the wheels first well again with the water spotting issues that we have it's really good to take the time and to rinse your wheels and do them first without getting the rest of the car wet because if I hose this whole car down uh, and then I do the wheels last, the, there's a good chance I'm going to get water spots. So my trick, and you don't see, no one else really does this. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos. They show them rinsing the whole car down at once. I do my car in three sections. And I'm going to show you that and I'll tell you why. Because this way you guarantee that you don't risk getting water spots. Again, it depends on where you live. Right now it's a cool day. I could probably hose the whole car down as long as you just keep it wet. That's the secret. If you do rinse the whole car down, 
take the time to continually kind of rinse it off so that the water doesn't start to dry in the water spot. So what I do is I put it on shower and I just rinse the wheels off to get all that loose grime. If I take a rag right now with a soap and water, I'm grinding the dirt right into all this paint finish and you will dull the finish or the clear coat on your rims. You have to be really, really careful with this. So initially I just rinse all the dirt off, just the wheels first. I, my thing is you do the wheels first and you save the body and paint for last. And that's why I have a separate bucket just for doing wheels. So I rinse them all down to the back ones. Now because my knees are so bad as an old guy in his mid-50s, I use an old moving blanket that I throw down, I kneel down on it so I don't tear my knees up. It's a little bit more comfortable. I keep my bucket of hot soapy water here with my microfiber towel and you do the rims first. I usually fold the towel in fours. Now these rims are really easy to do. You can get a little detailing brush to get in there. Uh, I do have a brush that sometimes I'll go in once a month and I'll clean my wheel wells. When I rinse the car off, I'll actually spray the wheel wells in because I don't want to get water spots on it. So what I'm going to do is just focus on doing the rims initially. I usually start by doing the little outer edge where the rim meets the tire. And then I slowly work my way around, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And, you know, again, dip your rag in often to get fresh water. Clean each of these sections thoroughly with your rag. And I kind of work around the little valve stem thing. I bought these nice little black anodized valve stem covers, which look really nice. Still debating what to do with my brake calipers. I may get some brake caliper covers. I don't know that I'll do red like everybody else, but I might get some of those or paint them. These rims are, are great. They're really easy to clean. I love the Shaker rims. I like the retro style and feel that they have. A lot of people, everyone today wants just the black rims, like the Hellcats, which do look nice. I might get black rims for my truck, actually. And then I clean the sidewall with my tire last. Be careful that you don't pick up rocks and dirt down at the bottom. I just wipe it thoroughly all the way around. So now my rim is clean. Now all I have to do is you rinse it off. I'll move my blanket down to the next one. And I rinse the wheel off. Try not to get any water on the, the fenders or the body if possible. Now you get on to the next one. It's that simple. After doing my rims, I rinse off, when I rinse the rims off, I also rinse off the exhaust and I use the same rag to clean the exhaust. So I put it up inside there and work it around. Your exhaust tips are nice. I have big side pipes on my uh, truck, which I clean as well when I do the rims. And then I rinse these off carefully too. That way you're kind of using kind of a dirty, your dirty rag and water for doing your wheels. Now you can use a wheel cleaner. A lot of people do that because I wash the car every week and these rims are forgiving. I really don't need it. This is more than enough. But sometimes if your rims are dirty, you can certainly get a wheel cleaner and let that soak on there first, which a lot of guys do, which, which does work. And I do recommend if the wheels are dirty. So now I've got... <coughs> I emptied out my little bucket. I use the bucket I use for my wheels. I rinse it out and I put all my rags, each one when I'm done with them, I just dispose of them there so that I can have them washed later. I've got my bucket of hot soapy water. I've got my bucket of rinse water, which I actually added another small bucket of hot water to it just to keep that warm as well. All my rims are clean and rinsed off. But see, now there's no water spots. So I saved the best for last. This is kind of like eating your peas and carrots first and saving the steak for last, which I like to do. Everything's super clean. I got my little exhaust tips lovingly all washed and detailed. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. 
So, and there's a couple little splatters of water on there, but that's going to come off. You just don't want those water spots, which are so prevalent when you have, especially working in the sun. You got Your sun is kind of your enemy. You want to do this in the shade if possible. But um, now the next thing I'm going to do is I break the car into two halves. And I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So what I do, typically it's ideal to do like rinse the whole car off and you start with the top. You do the, uh, the roof and the windows. Uh, and then the hood and the trunk and you slowly work your way down so that way you don't get the the dark deep contaminants that are down in the bottom of the rocker panels you don't want to get that little grit because each one of those little chunks you get in your rag when you're wiping through the car you can scratch the living hell out of it you got to be really careful the clear coat on all these new cars is very very thin so you want to protect it by not working and rubbing it off you want to just let the rag pretty much do everything on it. Another trick about washing cars is that, kind of like if you have a yard, if you have to mow your grass, especially when I lived in Florida and the grass really grow uh, fast, if you mow, uh, mow your grass once a week, uh, it's much easier to stay on top of it. If you let it go to once a month and do it, the grass gets much harder to mow, it's much more work. So it's the same, kind of the same principle with washing a car. It really behooves you to take your time do it once a week if you can. If you can, at least do it every other week. Makes a big difference and stay on top of it. So what I do, because, again, because of the water spot thing, is I break the car into two halves. I'm going to rinse the windshield, the hood, the front fenders, and kind of the mirrors and the first, the front half of the doors off without getting any water onto the roof or the trunk or the remainder of the car. And that's how I start off washing. And I do that thoroughly, rinse that off, and then I do the second half. And it seems to Keep, it gives, buys me more time so I don't get those water spots that can really ruin your finish. So I'll start by rinsing the, the windshield out first. The hood. And what this is doing is it's rinsing off all that loose dirt in little chunks. Now before you even do this, if you have any leaves or pine needles, you want to get all those out in here first because that, you don't want that stuff blowing onto your hood and scratching it. So I rinse all this off, get the front fender, I'll get the mirror, and just the very front of the front door only. Then I rinse the whole nose. The water basically is a buffer. It keeps and lubricates the finish so the dirt rolls off and falls off it without it getting scratched. Go over this side of the hood and work my way across again. Front of the doors, fender, even get the front rims again one more time. The spoiler, all the bugs and chunks off. You want to move your hose out of the way too. You don't want to trip over it and then land on your car and put it down. So make sure your hose is out of the way when you're doing your washing. Then I move my buckets into place, fairly close to where I'm working. So I take this bucket with a nice hot soapy water. I'll usually typically start with the windshield. Again, you don't want to grind. The windshield doesn't matter as much, but even when you're doing the body, you let the, the weight of the rag do the work. That's more than enough to clean it. You don't want to sit there and grind it into the finish. Now, it really doesn't matter if you go in circles or in 90 degrees. I typically do everything in 90 degree angles to try to avoid swirl marks, but either way in the end you'll still get spider webbing if you're not careful. So, you know, start with the windshield. Get the windshield wipers. And I clean the underside of the blade too, so you aren't getting contaminants scratching the glass. Clean the plastic around the inside. Then I do my mirrors. Basically, I do this half of the car first, the driver's side, and then I'll do the other side. Throw out the center of the hood. It's nice, hot, soapy water. Then I let it go out there and just let it go, just lightly. Let the rag do the work. You don't have to push it and grind it in there. Because if there are little chunks, at the last thing, and I'll even turn it over sometimes, halfway through, and just get the remainder. Because I keep the wax up on this, it doesn't take a lot of effort to clean that up. It's a beautiful thing. Now I'm going to take this thing and put it in my rinse water and rinse it out, just in case there's little chunks of dirt. So you rinse it out good. That 
and it's all clean. You don't have little rocks and pine needles and chunks and twigs that can scratch your car. Put it back into your soapy water, and now I'm going to do just the very front of this door under the rearview mirror. And I kind of do the top half of the, of the fenders, just the top. And I'm going to rinse it off again in the rinse bucket. And now I'm going to dip it one more time. Now I'm going to do the bottom half. Typically, if you wait, if you're doing the car all at once, you do the bottom last. But because I'm doing it in two halves, this is how I do it. Now, if you have a stubborn area, you can get some simple green, and you can take that and spray that down there, let it sit, and then just lightly work with it with a microfiber towel and get it off. But the problem is, by using a strong degreaser, you're stripping the wax off, and that's why you have to use your quick detailer wax spray to put that back on if you are going to do any major detailing like that. Same thing here. I'll get all the way around this corner. Like that. Now I get the other half of the car. I move my bucket over, grab my other one. Rinse bucket, have it close by. I try to have a bucket that's noticeably. I use the rinse bucket is always you typically the one with the paint on it, so that way I can quickly discern which one is which. Same thing. I start with the window. See now the sun's out. Even though it's cold and it's in the 50s, it's it, the water's drying fast. You have to work quick with this. Use my rinse bucket, rinse it off, get some fresh soap and water. Same thing, just let the weight of the rag pretty much the weight of the mitt do the work for you. Get every little nook and cranny. Got to get around that hemi thing, get that good naturally. I'll flip this over, lightly wipe off the remainder of the top, the nose. Go in my rinse bucket, and now I do my door. by rinsing the windshield. The wipers, mirrors. Work that soap off the hood. So you see it beads up nice because I keep the wax up on it. It's going to rinse one more time. I'm rinsing this off. Usually I just finish the nose first. But because I'm starting to dry, I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off at this point and then continue doing the nose. So that's what you have to do. you got to kind of weigh it out. If it looks like it's starting to dry on you, quickly rinse it off. You can always rinse it one more time. Now I'll just concentrate on the nose, which takes a little bit more time to get in all the nooks and crannies. I've got the black top edition blacked out little reveal in here in RT so we get all that good. The underside of this. Rinse it off. Hot soap and water. Do what's left at the bottom. Put it in my rinse bucket, rinse it out, put it back in my soapy bucket, I'm good to go. Now I can rinse off the hood one more time. There's a little bit of soap inside these vents. And blast that out. I put it like on a shower setting to where it just puts a nice kind of a medium pressure and just rinse all that soap out. Okay, now I'm going to take and rinse off the remainder of the car at this point. So now the first half is done. See, the back is still dry, so there's no water spots on the roof or the back. 
So it buys you time to get the car done. Rinse both directions. Just because I can get the meter that soap off. So I one more time. This is going to soak the bits onto it. And then it's off on the side, the back. Right. Now it's ready for washing the remainder of it. Now I'm going to save the uh, trunk and the tail for last. But before I do that, I'm just going to rinse off, because it's drying fast, I'm going to rinse off the top and the sides real quick. lovingly. Flip it over. There. And I'll rinse it out real quick. Get this tail thoroughly. So go around it first and get the center tail light. Okay, Oliver, how you doing, bud? Rinse it off. Where's my cat Oliver's out here? That's how I met, found him. Washing my car, and I've already done the exhaust. So I don't have to worry about that. It's up in This last little corner down here. That's done. That's it. Now I'll rinse off what's left. Again, I go in both directions. I'll redo the back water panel too, if I can. Start with the top and work the water down. Get the exhaust real good. All that soap is off there. You see, there's still soap on this side, so that's why I always go both directions. Get the back window one more time, and then work all the soapy water off the other direction. Now it's done. Now what you want to do is immediately get on here and get this all dried off before the sun gets to it, which I'm kind of working against me. The sun helps it dry faster. It helps you to dry it off easier, but you run the risk of getting water spots. So. It's sketchy. Now I'm going to wipe off the sides, what's left of them. I got the top, it's already dry and nice. Just work my way down. The car is clean, so you can go all the way down to the bottom now. Just kind of work your way down. Under the handle is good. So this one I was able to do it with two towels. <laughs> I kind of saved the nose and the tail for last because they're more intricate. You want to get the areas where the, the sun is on it first. So now I can kind of take my time now that the rest of it's dry. I don't have to worry about water spots. And I can focus on drying off these, you know, the cheese grater grill and under grill here to make sure there's a lot of water that builds up in these little cracks. So I'm going to get all that off.
and that's it. It's a beautiful thing. Pretty much detailed out. Now at this point what you could do is you can get in here with compressed air, which I do have. I've got a leaf blower, which I have as well. The problem with the leaf blowers and compressed air is at times you can end up blowing more dirt and debris that can get... Here's my cat Oliver, by the way. I found him while detailing my car about three years ago, and I've adopted him ever since. He was just a kitten, came up to me, he was lost, and so I've taken him ever since. Hi, bud, how you doing? He's a Maine Coon cat. He's my outdoor cat. I have a Bengal indoor cat. Hi, Oliver. Say hi to YouTube, my buds. He's a Mopar cat. What's funny, I'm not exaggerating. When he hears my truck or this car coming, anywhere he's in one of the ba neighbor's backyards or the cul-de-sac, he runs. He comes over here every time. He knows the sound of the Hemi. It's so funny. So he's definitely a Mopar cat, which is cool as hell. So yeah, you get a little bit of water that's under the edge of the grill here. So now what I can do, because it's so warm out, I could, I could use a leaf blower or compressed air and get in all the cracks. Oliver, don't hit the tripod, bud. But I'd rather, because it's so warm out right now, it's going to dry on its own. I just leave it. Sometimes I'll just drive the, move the car back into the street and then drive it forward, and a lot of the water will come out of the cracks, and that's enough to kind of go over it at that point. So now what you want to do is you want to get inside all of the door jams under the hood and the trunk, and I'll show that next. <coughs> So once, I have brand new terry towels, but quite often after I've used them a few times and washed them, and they've been kind of washed in the dryer, then they become secondary towels. So these ones I'll start using for, um, uh, like the door jams and the, the wheels and stuff like that. I mean, they're, they're still clean, but they're just not as perfect as the new ones. So I actually have like three different levels of terry towels. Initially I'll use new ones. After they've been washed a couple times, I'll graduate those to like, you know, the engine bay and the door jams and under the trunk lid and stuff like that or wheels and then if they start getting black marks or dirt on them then they clearly become like good cleaning rags for cleaning up cat puke or <laughs> pretty much anything else but you know, I just take this and just I'm gonna get the wheels next before they water spot you just wipe all this off compressed air really helps around the lug nuts and stuff like that but with this weather I won't even need it the sun's heating up quick California gets hot so fast I lived in Scottsdale, Arizona as well, and man, you had to work so fast early in the morning before your truck, especially my black Dodge truck I had back then, would dry so quick. So just enough, and see it's already getting dirty now. And then I just kind of get in here around these lug nuts where the water's trapped. Just take the leading edge and kind of stick it in around the little groove, and that's good enough. It'll dry. Now I'll do the other ones. Now I'm going to start doing the, the uh, door jams first. I usually start with the passenger side, wipe the top edge of the glass with the water traps on, get down on this door jam. Don't go in there, bud. No. Leave cat hair in there. Get the underside of the door as well. goes the rest of the way up, I wipe the bottom. I'll have to go over that with glass cleaner. I'm done. Here again. Here. Now we'll do the trunk. Usually I lift this up on a Challenger part way so I can see what I'm doing here and get the underside of the spoiler. Kind of dab in here. Get all these little nooks and crannies. Get the underside of this. Getting these seams good. water will tend to come out onto the fender, so you want to wipe that down right away before it dries. And I'll lift it all the way up and get the rest of the underside of the trunk lid first. Get all your little brackets and hinges. Now I'll wipe the glass and behind here and get this little grip recess in here. 
the side. A lot of water pools up down in here. Get all this good. And if your rag gets wet, just get another rag. That's why you want to have more than enough rags. You don't never want to just use the same rag over and over. Wipe that all down. Now open the hood up. I'll usually wipe the leading edge of the hood first. Get the top of the hood first before it drips any more on your car. And now here I get underneath and wipe all this water off the underside of the hood so it can't fall on anything. Then I get this little fender reveal here and get that wiped. Get it here. Lot the water out with a microfiber towel. I keep this thing so clean, I mean, I don't really need to steam clean it that often. I stay on top of this. This down. The other side of this. It's tough on my back, but very enjoyable. Water out of these little areas. Yeah. I'll wipe off this last, the front. My little rubber strip is coming off here, so I've got it duct taped on there to keep it from blowing out until I can get a new one. And it's kind of indicative of these, I guess, to have this little weather strip piece here. here. And then I'll take the damp rag where it's still kind of wet or damp, and I just lightly wipe over my engine cover. I've got some plans in mind for this, which I'll be talking about soon, as to mods that I want to do under the hood. I haven't done too much. The other guy had some decals over the center of this with a big black widow spider. I mean, it looked okay, but it's not my thing. So I took all that off with a heat gun. I'm going to paint this red with a enamel sign paint, old sign enamel, which will really look nice. The guy did put some nice anodized aluminum oil filler sticks, uh, tranny things, your engine oil covers, AC cap, everything. It's really nice the way it's done. I like the little red touches on there. It's just subtle but nice. So that's it. Now it's all wiped down. So at this point now I walk around the whole car and just make sure I get all the water off, you know, in little areas where it tends to pool up. It looks pretty good so far. Sometimes your little side marker lights and areas will have some water running out of them. Usually these rear view mirrors are notorious for water coming out of the little rubbers. And I just walk around the whole car and get any drips that I see. I already got around this gas cap, but I always, you know, wipe and even wash with soap and water this. So when my wife gets gas in here, she's got a nice clean gas cap. It's not all grimy and filthy. And you know, just kind of make sure there's no water spots. You get usually right in here, you'll get some under this mirror, you know. Or the windshield wipers, sometimes you'll see some spots, but just a little quick once over to make sure everything is dialed in. There's no water, there's a little bit of water moisture in there, I see. Get all that out. water here and there in some channels and that's it it's pretty good it looks great now I got it all wiped down there's no water spots it looks gorgeous glass is clean exhaust is wiped down wheels are all wiped down so now I'm going to start on the interior and uh, get going on that it's going to look great man I can't wait to get this sucker done What I'll do is I'll put this 
passenger seat, which I have it back, usually all the way, I put my visors up and I clean the glass. I try to do it from the passenger side if possible. This is really a bitch. I use two rags, two brand new clean carry towels. I also cut the tags off with a razor blade so you don't get any scratches from the tags themselves. So you can wipe, you can spray it on the rag itself or sometimes I'll put it on the windshield. And you get up here from the passenger side, it's actually easier. You get all the way around the edges first. This window is pretty clean because I just did it. But typically, I'll wipe it over twice. I'll get the initial layer of grease and dirt off the window first with one rag, and then I use a fresh rag to kind of buff all of the uh, streaks off, which really works out good. I get my rear view mirror too while I'm up here. It's nice and clean. Sometimes it takes a couple of times. Sometimes you'll have to spray this on the glass itself, which I'll do here just to show you. And really wipe it good. I'll do the inside of the windows first. You can do the outside first. It really doesn't matter. Now that it's heating up outside, the glass is getting hot. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll pull this car into the garage in the shade and continue it from there. But just because it's better lighting outside, I'm going to continue to do it out here just to show you. It's one of the reasons why I have a finished garage. So now the windshield is done. Put my visors back. Oliver, don't stay there, bud. Don't come in. He loves to go inside this car. I don't know what it is. He loves my truck, too. He gets inside and the floor and gets cat hair everywhere. So I do all the windows first. I'll use this and I'll just kind of lightly dampen my rag with this and use... I have window tint on my window tints. I don't like to use ammonia like in um, Windex, so I'll use this invisible glass. Just put a light mist on a rag and just lightly wipe the inside of my, my doors here just to get any streaks or fingerprints or haze off there. You get a lot of um, chemicals in the plastic from the heat that secrete and they get up onto the glass and so you get kind of an oily residue they get on the glass. If you keep, stay on top of it and clean it once a week even though it's a pain in the ass, it's easy to stay on top of it and keep it cleaner longer. So I wipe all these down. I'll do the outside of the glass last. So now what I do is I use this McGuire's a quick interior detailer and I'll take a, one of the, my brand new microfiber towels and I get it wet and I wring all the water out of it to where it's barely damp. I mean it's all wet but I squeeze the water out really good and you want to use as minimal amount of this as possible. I usually spray just a little bit on there on top just to kind of clean in case there is any oils or grease and just lightly wipe over the top of the dash, get all the way to the glass and I'll wipe this off. I'm not real big on armor all. It actually, your dash becomes a crack addict to it. It becomes where it needs it. And if you don't put it on, you start getting cracks. So I don't like to put armor all products on the dash. They do have some low sheen ones that I do like the look of, but you gotta be careful. And even then I'll clean it off every now and then and start fresh with new stuff. Now what I do is, as I'm going along, I take this little goodie here and get it kind of dust in around your steering wheel, the deeper areas that you can't quite get your fingers into, in between the little, uh, you know, turn signal indicators and stuff like that. You can get inside these little AC vents with a little brush and get all that dust out of there. And then you can put it inside these little deep recesses and then dust all the way around. I usually will take the damp rag and go through there anyway, but it's just nice to kind of pre-dust it first. Same thing with these vents. I'll turn these down a little bit so I can see them good and I do one at a time and work my way down from the top to the bottom. That way you have no dust. It's just dust free. The glass looks clean. The car looks good. Some of these areas in here with some dust. And now I take the rag with what's left. I'll put a little bit more quick detailer on it and I'll wipe down the steering wheel and the gauges. Now you want to be careful with this silk screen imprinted lettering and uh, little numbers and lettering that you'll have like on your turn signal windshield wiper indicators and stuff like that. If you put too much of this stuff, it's almost like a solvent. It can actually remove the little letters. A lot of people don't realize that and they end up you know, wiping over this with harsh cleaners and you'll easily strip these little silk screen uh, letters and decals off. So. You want to use common sense and not, you know, wipe too hard with it. Just a little light mist on there is all you need. 
and just because your hands are greasy, my wife with her makeup and all the creams and stuff in her hands, I like to wipe these nice and clean. So I don't put too much pressure on. I'll actually use the water side that doesn't have the stuff over the decals or these little letters. And you just wipe it off. Your fingers, these microfiber towels are so good. I love these things. You get them at Costco, dirt cheap. You'll spend a fortune for them at like you know, AutoZone or those car places. And then I put it down, go deep down inside over your steering wheel. Put a little bit more on here for the detailer. Clean all this plastic nice. This way it always looks nice. My truck looks like a rolled off the showroom floor and it's almost 10 years old because I stay on top of it. I don't put as much time into it as I do this now, but you know, you just get all these little nooks and crannies, get the underside of the dash. Little recesses where dust can accumulate. Just a nice damp rag is really all you need. Now this little window screen here, this um, GPS thing, usually I'll put just a little touch of this on there so it's fresh and I'll immediately wipe the fingerprints off. My wife leaves her fingerprints on here when she's doing her you know, touch screen deal. My battery went out so I had to <laughs> download everything and then pick this up hours later but I'm, I'm back I put the car back in the garage and I thought I'd come back to this and finish up so I finished the dash in the console uh, which I just showed a minute ago uh, now I'm going to take my damp rag which is still damp just lightly dampen just spray a little of the quick detailer from Meguiar's on there and get my door panels I already did the one on the other side when I did the passenger side of the dash so just wipe over all this nice and even this fabric in here, I kind of wipe to get dust off it. And then I do my, um, this gets kind of dirty, so I'll put a little bit more quick detailer on. And see some water drips and food and stuff that gets on here. My wife gets coffee on here sometimes. So wipe all this down nice. And get your little brush in here to get out the dust around these little knobs and stuff, which is nice. I like this thing a lot, it's cool. There we go, let me get all that white down nice. This has a great sound system. I love the sound system that came in this. It came with a better stereo. You can actually rip CDs inside. Uh, the 2014 is the last one where you can actually have CDs and rip them inside. There you go. Beautiful thing. Now I'll get my vacuum and I'll show you how I do my vacuuming. Now what I do is I recline my seat back so I can get deep into this crack underneath here where the seats recline. I vacuum the seats first and then I save the carpet for last. I also like to put a narrow tip on there so I can get down inside here. Uh, is well as possible, which really helps. So now it's all vacuumed out. I've got the glass clean. I've done all the plastics. I've dusted all the vents, cleaned the console, the seats, the back. Everything is completely wiped down and clean. I'll even go inside the uh, console and you know glove box and clean out any old napkins or anything that's old. That way, it always looks like a brand new car. If you stay on top of it and do the do the outside once a week if you can. The very worst case scenario, you can do the inside like every other time you wash it. I like to do it every week, but you know each person's different. Not all of us have the luxury or the schedule to go nuts. My truck takes about 90 minutes for me to do the inside and outside. This takes about an hour inside and out, which is why this video is so long. I try to edit the hell out of it, and there's still quite a bit to it, but I wanted to be thorough and go in-depth as to how I do it. So hopefully these you know tips will help you out. Uh, I'll show real quick um, uh, the, on the plastics. One of the problems with the Chargers and Challengers, they have a lot of like <clears throat> uh, satin black plastic 
kind of low sheen plastics here and there around the tail lights or certain parts or the spoilers and I'm going to use this uh, show you this mother's product that works really good at restoring that black it's a beautiful thing so I'll show that next now I've got this mother's back to black restore which I'm going to show around this tail light these tend to get really dull fast I have this problem with my 2008 Dodge Ram so I'm going to show you how this works you just put a little bit on here and just work it work it into the plastic try to keep it off the paint as much as possible it really works wonders Great. Now you take it and turn this over and buff off the excess. Looks like brand new. And then I take a damp rag and just wipe it off where it gets on the paint. Just kind of lightly wipe off the residue. There, it's done. Final detail. Looks good. Get this tail light swiped down one more time. There we go. Great product. Back in black. And now finally I'll finish up with my Armor All original. And I just spray a little bit of this on this applicator pad and just wipe it around. More on there. I'm going to get new tires. I've got the original Goodyear tires that are on here. These are 245 45 ZR20s, which I want to replace probably with the Comp TA ones, which I really like, the F Goodrich. Uh, I'm going to check into those and some other tires for traction. These are good all season tires, but they're kind of a hard compound. I want to get 275s for the back which I think will make a difference with traction. I like the, the fatter look, the staggered look in the back as well. Yeah, it looks great. Oh, shit. And if you get any on there, you can take a, you know, a damp rag and just buff off anything if you get a little bit on your chrome or whatever. But it's a beautiful thing. So that's it. That's pretty much it. This is my tips and tricks for cleaning a car and just basic detailing. Later I'll do some more videos where I'll get into uh, uh, you know, waxing and uh, rubbing your car out with clay bars or with cleaner compounds. But uh, I just wanted to get something together to kind of show you guys how I wash my cars, how I protect them, take care of them. You can get your quick detailer and hit areas if you've had to work at getting bugs or tar off. Take a little quick detailer when you're done and kind of buff that in. Keep that wax up on it, and then it's not a process. It's really not a big ordeal like it can be. So, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, guys. So, that's my tips and tricks for washing and detailing your car. Sorry that it was such a lengthy video, but I wanted to really be thorough and cover everything because I think it's an important topic. We spend so much money for these cars, the least we can do is to take care of them and protect them so they look great for years to come. This thing really shines up nicely. Love the way it looks late in the afternoon. 
that black plastic really came out nice yeah it looks great really happy with it I gotta do my truck next <laughs> thing's a beast it takes so long to do it I need to spend some time in the engine bay on that truck maybe I'll show that the right way to clean your engine bay without uh, creating problems but anyway this is my uh, video on washing and detailing hope you guys enjoyed it thanks so much for watching I'll have more content as soon as I can with Mad Max RT. Thanks again.